A full-size roof rack for my vehicle cost about $1,000, which seems a little ridiculous to me, but I'm pretty sure I can build one for 300 bucks. So there's basically four things we've got going on here. We've got the aluminum crossbars. Those are attached to the side pieces. The side pieces are attached to the four feet and the feet attach the whole thing to the roof of the vehicle. On the front, we have this aero shield that probably won't help aerodynamics very much, but it looks cool with some lights on it. So the first thing we need to do is measure. There are four important things to measure here. One is the location of the existing roof rack mounts, the front of the roof rack and the angle of the front of the roof rack, which is just kind of the angle of the top of the windshield. The back of the roof rack, and this is determined by opening your lift gate. Don't forget to open your lift gate, otherwise you're going to build a roof rack and then open your lift gate and it's going to crash into your roof rack. Finally, if you have a sunroof, you might want to leave a gap in the roof rack where that sunroof is so that you can look out and not see a roof rack. You can just see the blue sky and maybe the bird poop you haven't cleaned off your sunroof yet. So on my fifth generation 2010 Forerunner, measuring from the front, the front mounts are 33 inches back and the rear ones are 84 inches back. The open lift gate is about 92 inches back. The mounts in the front are 44.9 inches apart and in the rear they're 43.3 inches. So based on these points I decided to go with a total width of 47 inches. In retrospect I probably just should have gone an inch wider. That would have allowed me to grab a 4 foot by 8 foot sheet of plywood and just throw it on the roof in case I ever need a platform up there. I bought 10 crossbars but I'm going to make space for 12 because I'm going to leave two spaces open above the sunroof. That gives me a spacing of about 8 inches with one right in front of the sunroof, one right behind, and equal spacing all the way to the back. For the sides, I'm going to use 2 inch tall by quarter inch thick aluminum. The total length is 92 inches, but I'm going to split it in half in case I ever need to take it off of the vehicle and store it somewhere. It'll be a lot easier to move it around. For the feet, I just bought some 3 inch by 3 inch aluminum angle that's a quarter inch thick, and I cut it into sections that are 3 inches long. For the crossbars, I'm using extruded aluminum that is sometimes called 80-20, and it's kind of awesome for a few reasons. One, it's available pre-cut, pre-tapped, and anodized in silver or black in a ton of different shapes. Two, there are loads of components that bolt right up to it, so you can build all sorts of stuff off of your roof rack. The possibilities are endless, and isn't that what off-roading is really all about? I got 1 inch tall by 2 inch wide, black anodized, pre-cut to the length I wanted. Like I said, you can get them pre-tapped, but it costs 50 cents a tap, so I just saved some money and used that money I saved to buy a nice tap. Since the crossbars I'm using are only an inch tall and the side pieces are two inches tall, I'm going to drill holes so you can mount them either on the bottom or the top. On the bottom, the whole thing acts like a really big basket, and you can mount them to the top if you have something like a rooftop tent that needs to mount to your roof rack. Now we build. This project requires a buttload of drilling. We didn't spend $1,000 to buy this, we're spending $300 to build it, which means we saved $700, so feel free to use some of that money to buy yourself a nice drill. I used a drill guide so that I could drill straight and drill multiple pieces at once to save a lot of time. Be sure to deburr your holes when you're done. If, like me, you were too cheap to buy the tapped aluminum extrusion, now is the time to get comfortable and tap 40 holes. Do yourself a favor, chuck up the tap in a drill, get some tap oil. Get the side pieces, cut them to the right length, cut the front at the correct angle, and bolt it all together for a test fit. This is a lot faster with a bit driver, so since you saved $700, go out and buy yourself a bit driver. After that's done, get a friend to help you lift it onto the roof of your vehicle, center it, and offset it to roughly the right height that you want with some scrap wood or whatever you have lying around. If the mounting holes on your vehicle are recessed like mine, you might need to buy some spacers. You can get these at any decent hardware store. Get your feet that you cut out and clamp them to the roof rack in the right location and then mark the location of the holes you need to drill. Once you're done with that, take the feet off and drill the holes. I was kind of sick of drilling at this point, so since I saved so much money building instead of buying, I went out and bought a $2,000 mill to drill these last holes. Great, we're finally done drilling. Take it all apart, wipe it down with acetone, and hit it with some paint. I used some truck bed liner spray, which I kind of use for everything. It's decently tough and it hides blemishes pretty well. Once the paint's dry, go ahead and put it all back together. This is the point where you'll find out that some of the holes that you drilled don't line up. So bump up one drill bit size and do that thing where you wiggle the drill bit around while cursing liberally. So as a side note, the aero shield on these things is actually partly for wind noise. After I built this thing, I drove it around and noticed it had a really loud whistling noise. 
Fortunately, I work for a car company, and one day when the aerodynamicist was making fun of me for having such an unaerodynamic vehicle, I asked him about the whistling noise. He suggested it was probably the gap between the lights and the roof. The top of the windshield, especially near the edges, is very sensitive to disturbances. I did some guerrilla engineering with some painter's tape and found out he was totally right. Keep this in mind when designing your aero shield. When you're done with that, cut your aero shield to the right size, paint it, and bolt it on. While you're at it, go on Amazon and buy some cheap $30 LEDs to stick on there. You could buy nice LEDs, but you've already spent like $4,000 in tools building this thing, so maybe just go with the cheap ones. Do you have an awning? Bolt your awning on. Crack open a beer, have a drink, and start planning some dirty off-road adventures. I have a lot of questionable ideas when it comes to cars, and I like to record them, so hit that subscribe button and follow along. If you enjoyed the video, please like it, and thanks for watching.